Okay, next we want to show how to export the scan results to a personal watch list. So first, let's go ahead and grab my template because that's going to be very restrictive here. Uh, template, we don't want too many stocks. Okay, so yeah, that's a good one to use. And then we're going to change all optionable. As we saw earlier, we're going to use a public watch list called weeklies and we're going to change that. So that's going to be very restrictive there. We can get rid of this and we'll hit scan and see what we've got. We've got 474 results. We've got 50 showing. And so what we're gonna do is select this menu here and it says save as watch list. So we're gonna save that watch list. We're gonna use a numeric value here just so it floats to the top. We're gonna to call it video example two, so as not to confuse it with the saved custom scan that we created. And so we've exported that to a watch list. Now we open, bring in a watch list gadget and we select that from our list of personal saved watch lists, right? Video example two, that's the one that I just saved. It is the results list from that scan that I just ran. And you can see there's about 50 stocks here. So guess what? It only exports the stocks that are showing in the results section. So if you wanted to, for instance, do that again, but this time, export everything that's picked up by the scan well then you have to look at the scan and see how many total results there are in this case we're showing 50 of 474 so we want to go ahead and change this to let's say 500 so we capture all of it we do need to run the scan again so i'm going to click that green scan button now we're showing 474 of 474 and let's go ahead and see if we can export this save as a watch list We'll try to use the same name that we used before. I'm not sure it's going to give us an error message or not. It should tell us at least an error. Yeah, okay. So we're going to call this one number three. Okay, that way we don't have to worry about trying to delete the other one before we can save it again using the same name. And then we can go ahead and go here and select it. And now you can see we've got all 474 results exported to a watch list. Now, the big difference here is Look at this. These two here that I exported from the scan results section are static watch lists. Those are never going to change or update. They are no longer tied to the scan. You can save the scan, you can modify the scan, you can run the scan again. These two watch lists are going to stay the same forever until you delete them or make other changes. Only these icons here, these little purple icons, are the only ones that are tied to saved custom scans that will update dynamically throughout the day. And as I check my notes, I see that that is exactly where we're at at this very moment. Okay, so that is the next item that we're going to cover. Let's go ahead and run this scan so that we can again view the contents, okay? And then we'll go ahead and change this back to something else. Doesn't matter. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and change it back to this one right here. All I wanted to do is refresh the items listed in the watch list so that you can see that when I select the template saved custom scan as the source of this watch list, watch what happens. Okay, you see how that was blank for a little while and then it was populated? That was the scan running. Okay, now the scan has only returned 50 results. Why? Because I did not save the changes. So when you make this change right here, you see where it says show 500. Okay, remember the default? It was show 50. All right, so now what we need to do is save that. We'll save. Okay, hit the save button, confirm OK. All right, so now we can run that scan again. Notice that we've got 474. We bring our, our watch list gadget over here. Now, I have not touched this watch list gadget. Do you see anything different? You should immediately see that this scroll bar is tiny compared to what it was just before I made those changes. And now, instead of only showing 50 results in the watch list, it's now showing all 474 that are being generated by the scan dynamically in real time. Now, markets are closed, so you're not going to see any changes. 
But did you see how that, it's very important that you understand that connection. If you're gonna use dynamic watch lists generated from a saved custom scan, you need to understand how modifications to your scan need to be saved before they will update to the watch list, okay? And this portion right here that I wanna show you, this little portion right here, how many results to show are going to control how much gets displayed in your dynamic watch list. Next, we're going to be talking about how to tell when a scan script times out. So we're gonna use one of my premium indicators here. Okay, so what I've done here is I've loaded the code for the volume profile premium indicator, and I've loaded that here in this study filter. We're gonna go ahead and clear out all symbols, okay? This, uh, and we're gonna clear this, we're gonna clear that. So remember how I explained to you the top level filter controls what? It controls how narrow is the scope of your scan. And right now, because I've set it to all symbols with nothing intersecting and nothing excluded, this is running wide open on the entire universe of stock symbols and future symbols that Thinkorswim has available to it. So we're gonna run this and we're gonna pause the video so that you don't have to wait for it to be completed. And then I'll show you exactly where that message shows up to tell you when your script has timed out because you ran it against two many ticker symbols. And this is what it looks like. So when you run a scan and you see the animation of the Thinkorswim logo right here, stop when it stops spinning and you still have zero results in your scan, look right here, right immediately below that scan button, okay? Right in this row here, you see that it says error, script execution timeout. This happens when the scan is trying to run against too many ticker symbols. The solution is to use the top level filter as discussed throughout this entire video to reduce the universe of ticker symbols the scan is running against. That right there is gonna save so much pain and suffering. I, I can hear it right now. I can hear it right now, really I can, because I, I, I've experienced it, I've been through it, I know what it feels like, and when it finally dawns on you, the palm goes to the forehead, and you say, oh my goodness, why didn't I notice that before?